Hello everybody, Easy here. Nether SX2 is a modification of Aether SX2 that removes advertisements and advertising related files from the APK, re enables front end support, and removes arbitrary BIOS checks that break compatibility with some PlayStation 2 BIOS, and allows for the user to set an optional custom application name. Our goal in releasing the APK has been to strive for a safe and license compliant way to distribute the patch, and this guide will show you how to build and modify your own Aether SX2 APK into Nether SX2 APK, as well as optional modifications and setting up front ends. This is as simple as running one command, so let's get started. Before we start any of the app modifications, back up your save data. Please back up any existing Aether SX2 save data. This is because we will have to delete the pre-existing app data and so you do not lose your games in progress in the process. If you are on Android only, you can do this through Z-Archiver. To copy your Aether SX2 save data, copy mcd001.ps2 and mcd002.ps2 from Internal Storage, Android, Data, XYZ Aether SX2 Android, Files, Mem Cards, to a safe location. If you wish to keep your save data, once these are backed up, we may proceed. You will replace these into the same directory after Nether's installation. Quick Install, Curl from Web. This method will automatically download the script, build vanilla Aether, and patch the modified APK titled Nether SX2. This is my primary recommendation for most end users. Your first prerequisite and only requirement is going to be Termix, an Android terminal application. You can get the correct version of Termix from Ftroid, which I have linked in the description. It is not advised to use the Play Store release of Termix as there may be bugs not present in the Ftroid release. To install Termix for Android, go to Ftroid, which I have linked in the description, and scroll down to App Release 1.18. You can select the Download APK 97 Megabyte option. Once you have Termix installed, we are going to want to update our packages and grant Termix storage access. First, type apt update and an apt upgrade. When prompted to update and replace any packages, type Y. This is important to note, some people run into issues depending on their Termix repo. I suggest initially trying the Grimoire.se repo mirror. In our testing, this has worked as a solution to every case with a Termix repo bug. To change Termix repos, do Termix-change-repo. Select main repositories, select the Grimoire.se repo. Alternatively, you may see it under the single repository mirrors instead. Next, we are going to want to allow Termix file access. Type Termix-setup-storage. This will prompt you if you want to allow Termix file access, select yes. Once Termix is fully set up, we are able to run the one-line command to download the script, build Aether, and modify our APK. For the quick installation, to do this, we will be curling the script from the file host. We have released the script to several host sites, including Internet Archive, and you can also directly curl it from the Aether Community Discord. Check the description for our officially released mirrors. Curl from online. You can curl from a host website by doing curl url here aetherpatchfull.sh nn bash aetherpatchfull.sh nn rm aetherpatchfull.sh. For example, you could do curl internet archive aetherpatchfull nn bash aetherpatch.sh nn rm aetherpatchfull.sh. Once you have run that command, allow the script to run, build, and patch your Nether SX2. You are all set. All the processes will automatically run and open up your file explorer afterwards to the APK output location. Bash local. 
If you followed the Termux setup correctly from earlier, you can also run the script locally with bash file location. For example, we will create a folder named NetherSX2 in our internal storage directory and place the etherpatch full.sh within it. You can then run bash storage emulated zero NetherSX2 etherpatch full. This will run the script and execute the same process as shown in the recommended curl section, along with automatically opening up the output folder when it's completed. Adjust file name via Termix. If you are installing the script locally, you can also adjust the app name with the following command. sed i s nether sx2 your app name here g file location. Keep in mind your custom names cannot have spaces within the string. Nether SX2 Setup Make sure you have backed up your save data if you want to keep your game progress. I mentioned this step at the timestamp on screen, and come back once your data is backed up. It's also important to note, make sure you have uninstalled any prior Aether SX2 installations, and do not keep app data. There may be conflicts if you do. As long as you do not have any app data from prior installs, you can now run the NoAds APK we created. If you experience any packed installing Nether SX2, reinstall Aether from the source you got it from last, and delete the internal storage Android data XYZ Aether SX2 Android folder. If you are on Android only, you can do this through the archiver. Once you have deleted the folder, uninstall the application from your home menu. You have now successfully wiped your Aether SX2 install and data. You may now install the NoAds APK we created. You can now perform setup like vanilla Aether SX2. Select your BIOS when prompted. If you don't have a BIOS yet, there's a guide to extracting PS2 BIOS from PS3 files in the description below. Afterwards, you will be prompted to select your game's folder location. To set up your games within LaunchBox, you are going to need the launchbox.apk. A link to receive this APK can be found in the description. For the sake of this video, we will be using the free, standard version of LaunchBox Android. Once you have your launchbox.apk installed, we can run it for the first time. On initial setup, you will be prompted to allow additional permissions for file access. Select OK, and toggle LaunchBox to be allowed. We are going to click the button in the top left to open the side menu, and select Import Games. Click the Select Folder of Games to Import. Navigate to your PS2 Games folder, and select Select This Folder. Click Platform for Import. Scroll down to Sony PlayStation 2. Next, toggle the Import Games from Subfolders of the Selected Folder option. We can now click Proceed with Import and allow LaunchBox to reload. We can now navigate to our games and select the app. On first launch, you will be asked to configure an emulator for use. It should default to Aether SX2 as your default emulator. Select this option. You can now back out, and your launch box is all set with Nether SX2.
To set up your games with Daisho, we are going to want to download the latest release from the Google Play Store, which will be linked in the description below. On initial launch, you will see Download Platforms. Select it and select Sony PlayStation 2 from the platform list. This will download the PS2 section for your Daisho installation. Select plus paths on the platforms page. Select add more. Navigate to your PlayStation 2 games folder and click use this folder. Allow Daisho to scrape game data such as titles and box art. And then you are all set. By default, you will see a warning about killing packages when you run a game. To disable this warning, go to Settings, select Library, scroll down, and toggle Disable Player Warnings. I also recommend getting accustomed to the Widgets menu to add specific PS2 games. To add specific PS2 games, select Pin and Play, and then select Pick an Item. There's other options for widgets as well, such as continue game shortcuts, random game shortcuts, and application shortcuts. Once all is complete with the previous steps, you are all set. You may now run your own copy of Another SX2 with the post advertisement updates, ad free. Reintroducing front end support on top of other features, this project has been a lot of fun to work on. I want to thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to join the AetherSX2 community discord, linked below, and I will give support when applicable in the comments. Be sure to leave a like, comment your questions, and subscribe for more emulation related content. This is Zoe, and enjoy your games.